Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. This time I thought we'd talk about a rip sauce. So with rip saws, it's a little bit different than crosscut saw. So with a crosscut saw, the teeth are shaped more like, uh, say, a knife. So when you're cutting, you got the wood fibers here and you cut straight across, okay? Well, with the chisel, it gets hard to do because there's a lot of there's a lot of surface there to, to get across with the chisel. But when you're cutting with the grain, this nice knife wants to go right through. Okay? And that's sometimes if you ever did a rip cut with a cross cut saw, you notice it's kind of mushy. So you can do it if it's the only saw you have, by all means. With the chisel though, you're actually cutting those fibers, remove them out of here. So that's why you want something more chisel shaped for a rip saw than knife shaped than for a cross cut saw. So I have a few rip saws out here uh, from my collection. First of all, this is a five and a half point thumb hole rip. This one is 26 inches long. They call it a thumb hole because it's got this thumb hole. It allows for a comfortable two handed grip. Okay. This is an old Bishop. 24 inch. I picked this up at a garage sale for five bucks, I think, back in like 2005 or something like that. But uh, this is my main user. I prefer 24 inch saws. So, but that's a five uh, points per inch if I haven't mentioned it. Next, this is what is this? This is a Simmons. This is a rip saw I showed in the crosscut video. But uh, this one is 10 points per inch. This is usually I use this at the bench. Um, this is more like a panel saw. Some people would call this our toolbox saw. And then of course, you all have seen, if you watch my videos, you've seen that I have this child saw. This is a 10 points per inch, and this one's 18 inches. Okay, but this one does fine too. So, so this is my Danish frame saw. I built this from a kit I got from Blackburn Tool Works. And um, this is done for joinery work. But you can also use it for ripping a board. This blade actually does turn and uh, it does, does a lot of tasks. This one is nine points per inch. I'll be demonstrating this one as well. So I have a board here and it started off as two pieces of wood. So I want to take this board that was uh, glued up and, and get the big board back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab uh, this little guy's saw right here, and what I wanna do is get started. Okay? When I first start, I'm gonna drop down and find that line. Establish that line, then I'm gonna come back up. Yep. Okay, so that's that one. We we'll go to the 22 incher. Okay, the Danish frame saw. This is a, what's called considered a frame saw, so I have to put some tension on it. So I'm gonna go one. Two. And I found with two on this one, it does just fine. Just for demonstration purposes, I'll move over here to this middle and just do it right there. Hold on, let me check my blade real quick. This star, this, um, this saw is also called a continental style saw. Whenever we say a tool is continental, all that means is it came from mainland Europe. So it's usually you differentiate between English tools and then they say continental tools. This is more a continental style and these are more English style. Although you won't find much difference today. It was just uh, back when all this was developing. This is going to rattle around on me. Whoop. 
Okay, that's gonna rattle around on me. So what I need to do is take some of that vibration out the board. So I'm gonna drop this down to get started. soon it's going to bottom out on me. Okay, so I bottom out against my cross, cross beam right here. Okay, but against this cross member. So now if I want to continue to cut, what I got to do is turn this a little bit. Slide down it, make sure I'm straight. Okay. And now I should be able to continue on. Oop, you have to lift the board up though. Okay. the idea. This is one saw that I need to practice with. I just made this about uh, about a month ago. So need some work on it but for demonstration purposes that's the frame saw. Take the tension off it when you're done. Okay. Alright so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to change the camera and set up on a saw bench and we'll uh, We'll continue on. All right, so I got my saw bench set up here. This slot down the middle, that's actually for ripping, okay? So that the wood is supported on both sides. Now you can hold it with your knee out here, but I find better if you can center your cut right over the, uh, right over that slot. I'm not gonna draw a line on here, a guideline. I'm just gonna practice. All this is is just practice right now, getting used to tools. And uh, I'm gonna try and eyeball it and uh, try and cut a straight line as best as I can. So same thing, get in here. Oops, slipped. Okay, so I needed to turn myself a little bit so that uh, I get out of my arm's waist for coming back and forth. Now I'm trying not to cut on my bench, so I'm going to find that slot. find yourself going off your line, put this right here. I'm going to let this saw go way back. Re-establish that line. Then I can go back straight up. But uh, that's what I do for to start off with the rip saw, just practice. Get used to how the saw works and um, just make some cuts. Find a piece of scrap wood and Hopefully you enjoyed this video on the rip saws. Um, designed to go with the grain. If all you can afford right now is one saw, 
I would make it a crosscut saw. You can somewhat get by ripping with a crosscut saw, and uh, they're just more prevalent. There's just a lot more crosscut saws out there than there are rip saws. But eventually, you are going to want a dedicated rip saw. With crosscut saws, I usually tell people eight points per inch. Rip saws, five to six, somewhere in there. All right, thank you.